Hi, and welcome to Introduction to Programming. In today's lesson, we're going to learn what is a computer and what is computer programming. Before we can actually start to program, we first need to understand these two concepts and the theory behind it all. Let's look at what is a computer. So, according to a few definitions, a computer is an electronic device that will be able to receive something, do some sort of processing, and then give output. Or in general, it's a programmable device or machine that can do something for us, for humans. So there's two parts. A computer has hardware and it's got software. Now, if I refer to hardware, it's more a physical thing. And software, it's more an intangible thing that we will get to. Computer hardware is the tangible components of a computer. So, for instance, the screen, the keyboard, the actual motherboard, where all the resistors and chips are, etc. Then we have the computer software. Now, software is intangible. This will be like applications, operating systems, apps that run on a computer. We can't touch it, but we can visibly see it on the computer and how it works. Then we need to understand that a computer consists out of six logical units. The first two units is the input unit. This is our receiving unit and the output unit is more or less our shipping unit. So input, say for instance, the keyboard or the mouse or a camera where there's input into the computer. The output will be more the screen or a printer or a projector. So there's input and there's output. Then a computer has a memory unit. Now the memory unit is used to store data for a given task that's at hand. It's not long-term storage, it's short-term storage. So the memory unit is actually where you store the the data that you actually want to work with at this current moment. It's rapid, it's fast, but it's volatile. Volatile means that when the power goes off, the memory or the data is lost. And then we can move to secondary storage. Secondary storage is our warehousing. It's a little bit slower, but the key thing, it's non-volatile. So meaning if the power goes off, the data or information stored stays intact. Okay, so memory unit, volatile, secondary storage, non-volatile. So let's memory unit, more or less we refer to it as the RAM in a basic computer. Secondary storage, we will refer to as the hard drive but it can also be CD-ROMs and USB sticks. Then we look at the processing part of the computer. Now it's divided into two things. We've got the CPU, the central processing unit. Now this accounts to all the administrative tasks. So the CPU administrates all the things in the computer. What needs to be done, what needs to be sent to whom, etc. And then we've got the ALU, the Arithmetic Logic Unit. Now this can be seen as our manufacturing plant. This is where all the, the calculation is done, addition, subtraction, etc. So our ALU is more or less our manufacturing, whereas the central processing unit is more our administrative part. Okay, so this, that's a computer. That's all the hardware and software of a computer. Everything, the tangible and the intangible things of a computer. So the intangible things, the software. Now we can get to software programming. 
So what is a oh, computer programming? Computer programming is done essentially as a set of written instructions that the computer follows. Okay, other de definition states that the process of developing and implementing various sets of instructions to enable a computer to do certain tasks. Now it's very, very important to understand that as it may seem that a computer may be very intelligent, it's actually not very intelligent. Human beings are intelligent. Compute computers are not intelligent. The reason why I'm saying this is a computer does exactly what we tell it to do. Nothing more, nothing less, exactly what we tell it to do. And we need to understand that and we need to remember that for later when we debug and we not need to understand why the program is not doing what it's supposed to do. It's not the computer's fault. It's our fault. So computer programming, it's a set of instructions created by the programmer, human being, and the computer will follow those instructions line by line. Okay, so that's computer programming. Then programming is divided into three core phases or core cores, if I can just call it cores. Now these three cores are sequence, decision, and repetition. So first of all, computer programming, there needs to be a certain order in which certain statements are executed. Okay. There must be a certain order, and that will be referred to as the sequence. Then we've got decisions. So, for instance, we give the computer some input, and he needs to decide based on the input. Left or right, true or false, yes or no. Based on input, the computer needs to decide what to do. And that decision is based on what we actually tell it to do. We give it a certain condition, and it needs to test it accordingly, and then make a decision. Okay, so that's decisions. And then they found that certain sets of instructions need to be repeated quite often. And that's repetition. We use repetition structures to repeat certain sets of statements for a certain amount of times. And that's very important. And we need that in certain algorithms. So the three programming cores are sequence, decisions and repetition and then programming can be divided into three layers so programming language levels or layers if you want to so very very low level programming is called machine language we work in machine language this can be directly understood by the computer. So, essentially ones and zeros. So, when we actually talk to a computer, we are talking to a computer in ones and zeros. So we use binary um, to actually talk to a computer. Okay, the zero volt, five volt, and that equates to a zero or a one. Okay, so machine language is low level language the computer understands it, but the human being does not understand it quite well. Okay. Then they decided machine language is very under, um, difficult to understand for the humans. And they said, let's take a certain set of machine language instructions and we combine it into a one statement, for instance. And then we call it something. And then they started to create assembly language. Now assembly language, they assemble some parts of machine language statements and then they call it something. So they assemble a few things together. That's how I remember it. Okay, so assembly language. Now this is 
more closer to human-like language, but not close enough yet. But let's say, for instance, assembly language, for example, we say MOVWF temp. Let's say move the working register and then move it to somewhere else. That one statement does one specific, specific thing. And then they decided this is also quite difficult to understand. So they upgraded assembly language and they made it even more human-like. And then we created high-level language. And this is what we're going to use the actual pro to program. Now, high-level language, it's near everyday English. So let's look at the example there. Print if welcome. Now, welcome is, welcome is in double inverted commas, and this statement actually just means that we want to print out to the screen the sentence or word, welcome. And that's much more closer to English-like or everyday English, and it's much easier to understand than MOVWF. Okay, so that's the three language levels, machine language, assembly language, and high level language. And then, if we understand these concepts, we can actually start to program. So, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon in C programming.